Turn to your neighbor and tell him warfare is necessary. Um, this topic of warfare is necessary. Some people are like, why in your church, why are we always about fighting the enemy, beating the enemy? Why can't we just enjoy God's blessings? Why can't we just have some love and peace? Somebody just shower me some peace, you know. But you have to understand, if, if your bucket is leaking, you're losing. It's no matter as much blessing you can get upon your life, if, you're, if somebody's stealing from you constantly, you're already at a loss. So if we can stop Satan from stealing, killing, destroying your life, you are already blessed. No need to preach on blessing, giving, and all those things. So tonight is a night where we're going to speak on that. Why, ne why warfare is necessary for your life. Amen, church? If you brought your Bible, if you didn't, it's going to be on your screen. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 11 through 12 and it says this next next to him was shama somebody say shama son of agi the hararite it's pretty cool baby names i should be looking here <laughs> when the philistines band together at a place where there was a field full of lentils um, beans Israel troops fled from them. Verse 12. But Shammah took his stand in the middle of the field. He defended it and struck the Philistines down. And the Lord brought about a great victory. Somebody say warfare is necessary for victory. Come on, say it louder and more enthusiastic. Warfare is necessary for victory. And somebody say victory qualifies you for a reward. We have to understand that in this life, this is not heaven. We have to understand that we are, we are going to a place that will be perfect. We're going to a home which is going to be streets made of gold. There's be no pain, no evil, you know, no, no struggling. But as on this earth, we will be faced with an enemy which is Satan. And main characteristics of Satan is this. Steal, kill, and destroy. That is, he's the author, he's the creator, and he is basically the architect of everything that is evil in your life. When people begin to experience loss, when they begin to experience uh, uh, drawdowns, when they begin to experience loss, pain, sickness, death, they begin to blame God. They feel that they're unworthy, they're, they're, they're not worth it, and they leave Satan untouched. We feel like God is the, you know, God, why did you allow this? God, I'm not worthy. And, and Satan is nowhere to be found in the picture. Where God clearly says that Satan is the architect. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. So you have to put the, the author of that into the acts that's happening in your life. When you begin to experience the, the loss, when you begin to experience drawdowns, certain attacks begin to come out of life. Know who is bringing that against your life. Know that it is the Satan. Know that it is his agents. It is demon that it's facing. Yeah, it's, I'm glad. I want to tell you that, you know, everything is going to be good. Everything is going to be colorful. Everything is going to be awesome. But you have to understand, Satan, the Bible describes him as a roaring lion walking around seeking whom we can devour. If we're being oblivious, ignorant to saying, you know what? Oh, he's not touching my life. I'm not touching him. He's not touching my life. Well, I'm sorry to say, yes, he is. If there's poverty in your life, he's stealing the money that God has for you. If there's sickness or pain in your body, Satan is the architect of every pain in your life. If there's death in your family, if there's constant reoccurring of those evil happening in your life, let me tell you something, Satan is the architect of that in your life. Church is a place where we get to expose devil's schemes in your life. Satan is a place where we begin to stop the, the bucket that there's a hole in the bottom. And Satan begins to take from your life constantly. The, the divorce that has taken place in your family. The broken marriages. The families begins to take it apart. We can't just sit on the fence and say, as long as he's not touching me, everything is okay. What about tomorrow? What about the future that you live? What's going to happen then? God has a plan for us and God has equipped us with the weapons of warfare to stand our ground to know that God is on our side and that we are born of God and we are more than conquerors. We in Christ are victorious and he's by our side. Amen church? 
we're just going to to take few things from the scripture that we can learn and, and to see what can we apply for our lives how can we live a victorious life knowing that we can arm ourselves for battle and overcome the enemy that comes up in our lives amen church write down number one it says that satan will take everything if you don't stop him satan will take everything if you don't stop him we as we read in second samuel chapter 23 we heard about this man shamach it says that the a group of philistines a, a troop of philistine came against him and i kind of read something about what is a troop it's basically anywhere from 180 to 300 people came against him and he stood in the middle of a on the field of beans and begins to fight and protect it many of his colleagues many of his friends begin to run away begin to flee but one thing Shamak understood and he knew that look what I have here being a field it was it was a plan that was promised to him so he knew one thing look this line is mine look if I'm going to run from this place maybe it's to be in a field maybe it means nothing to some other to me it's my food to me it's my land this is where I'm going to live if I run now I was robbed of everything that God has promised me Satan will take everything from you if you don't stop him it's not a one of those things oh as long as I don't touch Satan he won't touch me no, no it's not like that if he can steal from your life without you noticing he will take from you certain things maybe in your life that you say oh well I'm accustomed to maybe you know the the you know the family drama maybe you know the finances maybe the things maybe you became used to but let me know let me tell you one thing God is not planning for you to fail God is not planning to say oh you know I'm gonna put him in this family which is dysfunctional maybe your character is just terrible you know this is where you're going to live no that is Satan stealing from your life and when you begin to realize Satan is taken from your life you know that there's something that God has equipped you with to fight against him. Amen church? One thing about life is life is not a playground. It is a battlefield. We don't go through life we can enjoy live the American dream and just do what we can and just enjoy this life. No, our life is a battlefield until we go into glory. You until you see God until you go into heaven you are going to have to fight for what God has promised you. God has given us a blessing. God has given us you know promises to live a good life, to prosper, to have more than enough but that life does not come without a warfare, without you saying you know what God promised to me and I'm not gonna let Satan take that from me. When you begin to realize what belongs to you, you begin to fight and to stand and say you know what you can't take it, it belongs to me yes you know what there's certain things that enemy takes it's not yours you're like well it's not mine I don't care but what belongs to you when somebody begins to take from life you're not going to just stand there and say oh, you know hey it's not mine no it belongs to you what does belong to you as you sit in there good health victory abundant finances begin to have good marriages to have you know a, a healthy body to have a good future those are the things that belong to you and when you begin to notice that they are missing from your life you have to realize one thing somebody is stealing from you and who is that the author of killing stealing destruction which is satan satan will not stop just because he's been stealing from you for for 10 years that's not going to happen Satan will not stop from you just because you lost somebody in your family. Satan is not going to have a pity on you just because oh you're all alone oh you know you went through so much you know this is enough. No he will take from you until everything that you have is gone. You know listening to, to some of the news some of the things some people that, that, uh, that I've, I've, I've encountered with and just seeing how Satan is not doesn't have any pity on anybody. You know, listening to, to one of the, in this, in our community, I heard of one time of a, of a 15 year old committing suicide and, you, and I was, and, and to me it was just, I couldn't understand. I'm like, how Satan can take something so innocent and begin to destroy it and take life out of it. I begin to just ponder upon him like, what has he has done? This, this, this boy has not even started living life and Satan already took everything from him.
talking to my friends recently and just just seeing how how satan began to destroy his marriage how the kids that he thought it was his own uh, you know satan began to take away and that the kids that he raised calling them sons both of them calling his sons four years later find out that they were never his sons and i was talking to him at, and, and in the back of my mind i was i was like how can satan do this to such a person and talking to 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 one it was my very close friend and i'm just talking to him and i was just and, and him saying you know i'm broken but then he's like, you know what, it's, it's not that. I want to commit suicide. I'm depressed. I went back to drinking. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to live another day. And, and, I'm, and I'm looking at the picture and I'm like, Satan, why don't you just stop? You already, you already took his marriage. You already took his kids. Why don't you stop there? Why do you have to continue going? And, and the Bible makes you to realize that he does not stop until he takes everything from you. He has no emotion. He has no pity. He has no, no compassion for nothing. If you walk away from fighting the devil, you have to understand you will fight people. We have to understand when Satan begins to steal from life, if we don't fight against him, we will fight something else. We see in the battle of, of David's brothers, when they begin to, when Goliath came against them and they be, he begins to threaten and begins to, you know, uh, paralyze them. And uh, the, David's brothers begin to run away from the war where, and then David comes and says, you know, I'm going to fight Goliath. And his brothers like, no, who do you think you are? They begin to fight people. When we walk away from fighting the enemy who is Goliath, who is Satan, we'll begin to fight people. Instead of fighting the real enemy, you'll begin to blame your kids. You begin to blame society. You begin to blame games, guns, all these little things. You begin to fight everything else but Satan. We'll blame God. We'll feel unworthy. And we'll, feel, and we'll make sure that Satan is untouched. That is the whole scheme of Satan. To be able to leave a place without being unnoticed. To be able to steal from your life. Make you to realize this is normal you know divorce this is normal you know you know losing your virginity is normal getting a drug at an early age that is normal committing to it that's normal people go through it and he begins to make you to realize this is a life whereas my bible begins to shine it says that God came to give life and life more abundantly you don't have to live this way when God begins to come and says you know I'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding I'll heal all your diseases I'll give you so much room and so much blessing that you cannot contain it that is the life that I came to give not a life of poverty sickness and pain that's what God wants to make us to realize why we fight every service why we begin to to in this place begin to engage against spiritual warfare and against satan because we know one thing if we don't fight satan we'll fight something else each one of us will born we are born with a fighting spirit as 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 nice as you look get you in a bad day you will you will be the the worst person on earth now, even me i fight too you know before david you know before david got big and, and like a hulk i used to beat david <laughs> I used to, I, I promise you, you know, parents leave and I'm like, close the door behind me. I'm like, what's happening now? <laughs> so I used to beat him, you know, but that was when he was four feet. That, that, that's, you know, now he's like seven. So I'm just like, he gave it, no, <laughs> you give him some money and leave this place, you know. But even me, you know, I, back in the day, I would just, just fight. Now I'm just a lover. I, just, I love everything. I love tacos. You know, th those things are good. But even then, you know, I would like to fight, you know. As, as good as you think you are, God has deposited that fighting spirit inside of you. Not against your brother, your sister, your, you know, your neighbor, those who do not share the same faith with you. But Satan and his agents will fight in this place because we know that if we don't fight against him, we'll fight something. There'll be something tomorrow we're gonna you know begin to say oh the government is this and and you see their passion and 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 their anxiety oh you know the police is this they're doing this and they fight against the wrong thing where satan is untouched yes you can fight the the person that's done evil but unless you remove the evil out of the person you have not won the battle unless you remove the evil out of that person you have not won the battle we don't fight people we fight sin in people that sin is satan that's one of us things that we have to realize if we do not if we do not fight back against the enemy he will take everything from us until it's all gone number two offense is the best defense offense is the best defense some some of the quotes that are real, uh, that are read that are like george washington wrote in 19 in 1799 says make them believe that offensive operation often oftentimes is the surest if not the only means of defense. Uh, Mao Zedong 
uh, said that the only real defense is active defense, meaning defense for the purpose of counterattacking and taking the offensive. Often success rests in destroying the enemy's ability to attack. And the one with a quote that they said is, some martial arts emphasizes attack over defense. Wing Chun, for example, the style of Kung Fu, which uses the maxim, the hand which strikes also blocks. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. If you stand for nothing, you will lose everything. We have to understand, we, we, we are the people God has created as warriors. God says you are more than overcomer. Overcomer over what? Not overcomer over your, your, your parents when they're telling you to do something. Not overcomer of your, your little brother and sister or your dog that the, the peed on your carpet and you begin to become an overcomer. No, it's not that. Overcomer of the enemy. God says, I made you a chosen generation. I made you a royal priesthood. You'll be more than a conqueror. Those who are born of God overcome the world. Why over, overcome? Overcome over what? Of the evil that is going around. Of enemy that, that's roaring like a lion against our situation. We have to understand Christianity is not all, you know, God's presence fill my life. But Christianity is also knowing your position in Christ Jesus and stand against the enemy when the floodgates begin to come against you. And you begin to stand in God and say whatever is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of me and it will overcome the world. And whenever the sickness begins to come against you, you're not the person that says, oh, we're just going to be a part of statistic. But says that by his stripes we're healed and you begin to counteract those who begin to attack those are the ones who be the most protected and most victorious amen church one thing about Shama, uh, Shamach is that he understood what belonged to him in the, the field of of the beans one thing was to Israelites that land was promised everybody else flew because they're like you know I, I might nothing you know nothing will happen you know we're going to get attacked this is like 180 to 300 people are coming against me but Shema understood look said this land is mine God has promised to me this land if I lose this land I lost everything if I lose this land I'll lose food I'll lose provision I'll lose my my house everything that God has promised me I'll lose so one thing he understood God has promised to me and it belongs to me it's mine we are many times easy to lose things that are not ours. You know, it just recently, you know, Latimer's house got broken into. You know, it didn't affect me at all. Actually, to me, I was just like sitting back on the chair. Watching Latimer's like, whoa, somebody stole from me. Just walking like, he's, he's going to attack. He's going he's gonna to do something. Even if he finds him, he'll forgive him. Something's going to happen. It didn't affect me at all. Hmm, zero. You know, I'm like, yeah, Vlad, this guy looks... Uh, it's like maybe white, maybe Russian. I don't know. Looks like a, yeah. I don't know. Just like didn't really care. But then when they towed my car, man, if I wasn't wearing straight out of the church shirt, I would have made, I would have made history in that towing company, you know. So when you begin to realize that something belongs to you, you begin to fight against it. It's a realization what belongs, what is yours. You know, I can take a, a, a bag that is next to you, which is not ours. You're like, hey, you know, a thief, run, fine. But if it's your bag, you're going you're gonna to run the fastest mile that you ever ran in your life and catch the thief. Because it is yours. Shema understood, this field is mine. If I lose this, I lost everything. God has promised to me that I'm going to have good health. And if I lose good health, I have nothing. God has promised me abundance. If I lose abundance, I lost everything. Come on, put our hands together for Jesus. First, First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.18, it says, Fight according to the prophecy which was spoken to you. What has God been speaking to your life? What has God promised for your life? Is it good marriage when you only thing you see is fights? Is it a, a mean the house will serve the Lord when everything you see, your family is just, just being broken apart? Is it that, that I'll pour out windows of heaven or oh, enough blessing upon your life that there'll be no room to contain it where you begin to see lack after lack after lack? What has God has promised you? Are you fighting to according to what has God has given you? Or are you like those other Israelites who run away the moment enemy assembles its troops? You have to understand the enemy will attack. But what comes next is realization. God, you have promised this to me. You said it is mine. And I'm going to position myself in the middle of this promise. And I'm not going to go until I'm going to defeat my enemies. God has promised us so many things. So many goodness. So many blessings in our life. That there's it's just so, you can't even outnumber it. 
But how often Satan begins to steal, steal those promises. Steal, and you look in your life and you're like, well, you know, I should try harder. No, realize where enemy is stealing from you. And one of the things from my life is, you know, when I'm on piano, I begin to scream, so I lose my voice, begin to fight because I realize God has so much for me. I just need to realize who is taking whatever God has promised me. Who is God? God has promised us, you know, a, a huge church, a miraculous, you know, signs and wonder, prophecies, healing. It's, it, that's what God has promised. God, that is ours. But many times, Satan begins to steal those things from us. He's a thief. How about when it comes to a good health? How about when it comes to good relationships, good marriages? If Satan begins to take from your life and you just say, you know, God, this is the, you know, this is my generation. No, someone is taking it from you. What has God given and promised for your life? What are you standing for what God, what God has given you? Where is that field of beans that God has spoken to and said, this is yours, this is your inheritance. You shall live here. You should be fruitful. You'll be multiplying in this place. And you begin to run away where it's in, when enemy begins to assemble the troops. Number three, when we stand against the devil, God brings the victory. When you stand against the devil, God brings the victory. One thing about Shammah that I, we were reading, now, nowhere in the scripture said that he was skilled. Nobody, nowhere in the scripture you see he was qualified. He, wouldn't, he was made a mighty man of David after God has brought the victory. So if you see the scripture, it's not that this guy was from his youth, he has killed thousands of people. No, this guy was just like, you know what? God has given me this land. I'm going to grab my sword. I'm going to stand in the middle of it. If God shows up, I'm going to fight. And that's exactly what happened. He said he positioned himself in the middle of the field and read the scripture and it says then God brought about a great victory. Who? Was it Shema or God? We have to understand it's not that we have to be qualified to win a war. We just have to put ourselves in the middle of God's promise and says God I'm here and whenever you show up we're going to win this battle. It was never about Shammah. It was never that he was skilled or he had, you know, all these qualifications that made him great. It said that God came on the scene where Shammah said, you know what, God, you've given to me and I'm not leaving this because this is mine. You have promised me I'm not going to leave this place until I overtake my enemy. And God brought a huge victory. What are you positioning yourself this evening? Which promise of God that you're stationing yourself in is saying, God, this is what you promised me. It doesn't matter who comes against me. I know you're on my side and we shall overcome. What promise that God has given to your family, to your future, to your children? And you say, that, God, this is the promise that you've given me. I'm positioning myself in the middle of this field and I'm not leaving because you said it and it shall come to pass. He knew that God promised and he knew one thing, that if God promised, God will fight with him. God says, I sent forth my word and I watch, make sure my word does not come back to me void. God says, you know what, I, I gave you a promise. Yes, I've said many good things. But do you, do you take that promise and you position yourself in the middle of that promise and say, God, you know what, you've given to me and that's it. I'm not going anywhere. Only thing in the back of me is defeat and ahead of me is, is the enemy and I know you're by my side and if God is for you who can be against you. He, he understood the principle that if God is watching over his word there's no way I'm going to fail. You know all heaven and earth will pass away but God says my word will not pass away. I'm gonna position myself in God's promises and I'm not going anywhere. What has God has spoken to your life? What has God has been speaking in your life so you know what? You will graduate. You will you will break this addiction. You you'll get married. You have a, you'll get a, you have you'll have a good marriage. You have good family. You will raise great children. What is the promise that God has given you? But in the back of your mind, you feel like you know it. It's just words. But God say no. I'm watching. I'm watching on my words. God says. I'm not a man that I should lie, and I'm not a son of man that I should promise and not do. So no, if I said it. I'm gonna make sure it's gonna happen. Are we settling with just whenever the enemy roars or attacks will begin to run or are you taking God's promises? God this is this is everything that I had. You have to understand one thing about about this about this about this scripture is that the Philistines came and begin to attack at a time where the where the beans were just ripe. They did not want to take, they did not want to attack the field just for the field. They wanted to attack the, the field because it was just getting ripe. It was just time for harvest. This speaks of youth. This speaks of youth. Just ripe. 
just at a time where it's harvest the enemy wanted to come and destroy and overtake that place this evening as we're standing here one of the things that God wants to put on our hearts is to fight us for our youth for the for the for the field of beans that were just arrived just at the time of harvest that's where Shammah stood in the middle of the field and he began to fight and this is this is prophetic I believe it speaks about a young generation you begin to defend you begin to fight and begin to protect a young generation enemy knows that if he wants to destroy our future he will aim at our beginnings he'll aim at the youth one of the things that, that God has put on my heart and my, and my wife is to be able to work with youth and, and as I was the scripture has been in my mind for a while to be able to to fight for that youth fight for our teens because God because Satan knows if he can destroy the youth the church is destroyed because the youth is the future of the church Shamak understood and he said look this is the time of, of harvest this is the time just where the beans are ripe just ready to be picked I'm gonna stand I'm gonna fight because the future the future is in in the, in the young people what is God calling you to fight for maybe you know it's it, you're saying you know I, I have my own problems that I need to fight against and you know you know how why I'm gonna fight to save other people especially the youth you know salvation so why should I bring other people to church why is this so important when you begin to take thing take care of the things what matters to God God will begin to take care of the things that matter to you the most you know maybe you say that you know I don't need to fight for anybody else or, or for nothing else you know I'm just gonna concentrate on my life well how about tomorrow how about your future how about the marriage how about the family how about then you one day have kids you one day will be married you one day will have a family how about then right now fighting for somebody else's life is seems to be like you know I have so many other things in my mind but also he began to protect of, of the, bean, uh, the the field of beans that somebody else would eat from not just himself you know Shammah didn't think of oh I'm gonna protect this land this is enough for me and that's it no he began to protect the whole field because he said the whole town will eat from this place my neighbors my brothers my sister my my father my grandparents everybody's going to be taking part of this thing and I'm going to fight for that salvation of souls is what matters to God the most God wants us to each one of us is the field sometimes that it's like you know it's not worth fighting for it's somebody else's life why do I care no it's something that will that, that will create our future the youth the teens that we begin to pray for them that we begin to rebuke every devil to begin to bind every, every every devil over their lives to begin to mentor them to begin to raise them because we know one thing if Satan wants to destroy our future he will aim at our beginnings at the youth God is calling each one of us tonight it's it's more of a message that you know uh, that God has given us a responsibility to fight to be warriors to take a place a stand where God wants us to be victorious and God says if you stand on the promise I will fight for you I'll fight with you and we will overcome and there will be a place that they'll say in history that you know that John that that, that Mary that they stood their ground they believed for salvation of soul and the whole city was saved they didn't leave the promise that you know the thousands local and millions globally they didn't leave the promise because they understood revival will come to a city and today they're listed in history because revival came to tri-cities God wants to see are you going to battle for your city are you going to battle for your family are you going to battle for yourself are you going to stand and fight because the promises that God has given to your life they're never ending they will not fail you and God says are you ready to step on the field and defend it because I am by your side 